YouTube as it going, the Goat House is back. And we got huge news here. It actually happened. Jamal Adams traded from the Jets to the Seattle Seahawks. Really didn't think this was going to happen because the Jets wanted maybe too much in return then given that Jamal Adams clearly did not want to play for them. He was making it very clear that kind of gave the other team trading for him some leverage. So I didn't think two teams, you know, one being the Jets obviously would be able to uh, create a deal here that made sense, but it actually happened. Huge news because it's a superstar safety here to me is more than a safety uh, and definitely a player uh, for the future too as a, as a bright future. So we're going to break it down, and then I'm going to give you my grades for both teams here. Uh, trying to reach 60K by week one of the NFL. That's coming up, so please help us get to that subscriber goal there. And uh, please check out both of our channels. Follow that Twitter, and then check out the podcast as well. Any link that you need for any of those things there you see on the screen, they'll be down in the description uh, and in the comments of every single video. So would really appreciate you if you can check any of that out. Subscribe, smash that like button. But looking at the trade details really quick, I'm sure everyone knows them by now, but the Seahawks get Jamal Adams, new safety for them to pair with Quandre Diggs, and a 2022 fourth-round pick. So they get, they get a pick back there. Um, and the Jets get a haul here. They get a first-round pick this year. They get a first-round pick next year. And they get a third-round pick this year as well. So... You know, they kind of swap the third for a four there, so the Jets kind of climb up in a year earlier as well, uh, and they get two first, and they get the Seahawks' strong safety, Bradley McDougald, who's been, you know, solid for the Seahawks, definitely worthy of a starting spot, but now the Jets have Bradley McDougald. They have Marcus May, of course, who's been playing alongside Jamal Adams, and they drafted Ashton Davis, who was kind of that true, you know, single high free safety, maybe the best one in the class, uh, for in terms of the single high free safeties because there wasn't too many of them, and he was definitely the best one, a playmaker in the back end with a lot of upside there. Um, so it's going to be very interesting, interesting to see what the Jets will do with that, that group of three. Uh, we can get into the grades right off the bat here. I know that's what everyone wants to see. The Jets, I gave an A-, and this is what I was kind of thinking, you know, right when the trade happened. You know, I let the details kind of sink in a little bit, let them settle in my head a bit, and I kind of changed my mind, not completely, but a little bit on the on the Seahawks, and we'll get to the Seahawks grade in a little bit. But uh, A- minus for the Jets, and that's kind of where my head was at right off the bat. Why? Because I was, you know, I was kind of surprised they got that much. I didn't think they were actually going to trade them because I thought teams were kind of going to low lowball them, um, you know, just maybe a first round plus a second, and then maybe a late round pick. Uh, but they get two firsts, they get a third, and they get Bradley McDougal as well, who's a solid safety for them. You know, nowhere near Jamal Adams, but so they get a pretty good haul. Um, you know, it may be a con why, why it's got the minus, you know, it's still in the A range. So I think it's pretty good. Uh, but maybe, maybe cause you know, they, they, they traded away a, a top tier talent. I think a rare talent. There's not too many of these types of do it all safeties, you know, strong safeties, but he's more than that. And it's kind of hard to come across them. You know, um, you got, you know, Jamal Adams, Harrison Smith, who's aging, uh, then Derwin James is probably, a, you know, a new school one like Jamal Adams. There's really not a whole bunch of them um, that play that that uh, that role where he's a strong safety but can come up in the box, you know, can get after the quarterback but provide pressure. He's going to make those impact plays as well. Um, so you did let go of, you know, a, a young talent that was going to contribute with the other young talent they have. You look at, you know, the linebacker unit, the inside linebacker unit's pretty solid. You know, Quinn Williams in the D-line, bright future. Um, so they don't, and they add a, you know, to me, Ashton Davis was kind of a perfect safety to, for the future to pair with Jamal Adams. So they do kind of miss out on pairing him with, you know, you know, pairing those guys with Jamal Adams, I suppose. So the defense definitely takes a hit for this year. They're, they definitely get worse this year. And they were kind of, you know, if they had success this year, it was mainly because, yes, maybe Sam Darnold stepped up, but mainly because the defense is really continuing to improve and step up. It could be a could have been a very solid defense. So that hurts a little bit. But kind of backtracking, they got a load. You know, they got a haul uh, more than expected, given that Jamal Adams was kind of going out his way, saying he doesn't want to be there. Um, he doesn't like the coach. I don't really like the coach either. Um, but I, I do think Joe Douglas has, has to be involved, you know, with the contract discussions or – when to, to start them or how much to give him. So I don't think it's all on Adam Gase there. Um, so in another positive here, another positive is they, they couldn't kind of complete the puzzle first off to the defense, you know, a, a solid defense, some solid young names on there. 
Uh, but they couldn't complete it because they're they're very weak at the edge, the actual edge rush position, and they're pretty weak at uh, the cornerback position. And they were just unable to kind of land those players that you know the big time free agents really didn't want to come to them. Maybe minus C.J. Mosley. Uh, but at those positions, corner and edge rush, you know, the big they've been trying to get the big time players in free agency at those positions. They just didn't want to come to them in the draft. I mean, you only got one first round pick. You got a high pick. Offensive line so important. That's where they went this year. Um, so they weren't able to kind of, you know, get those last pieces of the puzzle, which they they kind of go backwards with losing Jamal Adams. But they're still solid at safety. They don't really have a giant need at safety, which is kind of rare. Trading your best player, he happens to be a safety, and you you don't have a whole there so that's kind of the good thing now with these multiple picks the good picks that you receive uh, you know even though they're going to be later first from the Seahawks but there's still extra picks there you can kind of finally finish that uh, other thing is yeah you do need some more pieces on offense kind of finishing touching up the offensive line and maybe the receiver unit but you're getting there they're definitely getting there um, it's also good to have kind of that insurance because they don't obviously they don't need to use these picks now they get to see how Sam Darnold is before using these picks and you have a load of picks you having that extra insurance in case you want to maybe get a quarterback. If they somehow can flip this for Trevor Lawrence, that's kind of a wait and see thing, but it could be a win. Even if you believe in Sam Darnold, you know, that's definitely an upgrade. So uh, there is definitely more positive here. This is going to help them finish that puzzle, finish those last pieces that they were unable to do, and they kind of got more than expected here. Uh, it does hurt them for this year. So I'm not going to punish them too much for that. Obviously, I still have them in the A range, but they have the A minus. So on to the Seahawks, finally. I also gave them an A minus. First thought, initial thoughts, I was probably going to have them in the B range. You know, B around there um, because they traded a lot. And I didn't think, you know, I didn't think it was going to take that much. You know, I knew the Jets weren't just going to let go of them. But I thought the value was starting to go down a little bit. You know, I knew it was going to take well more than just a first-round pick. They did they did trade two first. They traded their you know, Bradley McDougal, which wasn't too much use for the Seahawks at this point. Um, you know, and they had a third round pick in there as well. So it is a lot more than expected at this point. You know, is is it what he's worth? I can agree that it's probably what he's worth in terms of his play, his potential. Um, so that was kind of the initial thought why everybody, including myself, maybe maybe want to put him in the B range. You know, maybe the Jets win the deal because of that. Uh, but really thinking about it and – you know, they. It's so hard to find that specific. You know, that player. You know, he's more than a safety. It's so hard to find that. I think the Seahawks been trying to. You know, I, I got like Marquise Blair is like a very, very poor man's version of that style safety there, uh, and they they want that. It's such an important piece. You know, people think safety not that important. I'd say not so fast, especially with this specific type of safety. They're so important to these teams, you know, and they're such game changers, and not even close to all the teams in the NFL can have those players. And it seems like to get – I mentioned Jamal Adams is one of them. You know, the Jets had – he was my number one prospect in that draft a few years ago. I like Jamal Adams that much. Uh, He was a top pick in that draft. Derwin James is another one. He actually slid a little bit, but he was still picked in the teens there for the Chargers, and that's Derwin James. You know, uh, those are the the style safeties – there's not too many of them, um, you know, and there's some that can be good. You know, they're solid prospects that got some upside. They may be able to play to that level. But then there's a sure thing like those two guys that I named. And it's been impossible to, for, for the Seahawks to find that guy because, you know, they, they, they don't pick – they don't pick that high ever, and they would have to trade. Imagine what they would have to trade to go all the way up and get that guy that's only in some draft classes, only there once in a while. You know, they would have to trade the same thing, if not more. So that, for what I just explained, that makes me like it quite a bit more. They got that guy. They got that guy that's going to be a top tier safety, an elite football player now to help them win now, but and in the future. You know why? Maybe I didn't want to put it over a minus. Yeah, they traded quite a bit, but also um, they're really lacking at the pass rush position, the actual edge rush position, and they're lacking the offensive line still. And I really want them to finish those pieces. Um, to 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 be that dominant team, you know the Chiefs are kind of known as that p- number one team, that dominant team. I think the Seahawks very easily could be in that conversation if they kind of finish those pieces there. You know, get Russell Wilson the protection protection he deserves, and get edge rush because that you know they lost Clowney, um, and, and you know as of right now they don't have Clowney. He's still a free agent, but it's such an important piece too. You know, an important factor in every single game is getting that pressure. So uh, it, it kind of limits them to 
gaining that, gaining those pieces that they need, the last pieces, by trading away these picks. Uh, but at the same time, you know, they actually have a decent amount of cap for the future. You'll have to pay Jamal Adams. But out of the free upcoming free agents, the only ones that I think are guaranteed they'll try to re-sign to decent money are Chris Carson and Shaq Griffin. So they really won't be spending a whole bunch of money. So they're, you know, they won't be able to go get edge rush and offensive line multiple in next year's free agency. But they'll be able to use their the rest of their money to focus on on something, you know, like that. Uh, and they do have young edge rushers though. You know, Daryl Taylor's a good pick. Alt Robinson's a good pick. So and they have LJ Collier. So they're they're trusting their process. You know, they're trusting that these guys will be able to step up. And adding Jamal Adams with that mix, you know, that secondary is gonna be that much better. It's it's pretty much a complete secondary. I should br- br- uh, bring up that when I was discussing the free agents next year, KJ Wright's involved there, but that's where the Jordan Brooks draft pick comes in. So KJ Wright on the decline, aging probably on the way out, but it'll be okay for them. Um, so they'll save money there. <clears throat> but secondary is looking really good, and Jamal Adams is kind of involved more than just the secondary. Um, so, yeah, they trade a little bit. Maybe it hurts them focusing on the last pieces that they need a, a little bit, but they're ready to contend. They got better today, uh, and they got that that rare player. That this, That's the key here and why they're in the A range, a range. They got that rare player that they were not going to be able to get unless they traded for that player, whether it was in the draft or uh, like this situation here. So that made me like it a little better. So uh, you guys can let me know your thoughts in the comments. Grade the both the teams and give me your reasons why you graded them where you did. Um, so I would appreciate seeing that in the comments. Please smash that like button. Uh, subscribe to our channels. would much appreciate that. But uh, that is going to do it for this one. Thanks, everyone, for watching. Goodbye.